So here is the Le Maurice ensemble of dress, evening coat, and turban as designed by Michael Canadis for Fanny and Friends. And I think if you were to see the details on this, you'd really be amazed at this gorgeous fabric and all of the exquisite beadwork that's already been done for you. It's very, very simple. And the gorgeous opera coat or evening coat that's trimmed with pieces of this wonderful fabric. This is a great pattern. It's a great design by Michael and team. I think that uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. And I hope that you make some other gowns and things using this, um, this pattern. She's really wonderful, and I really enjoyed working on this. Here are our bodice components for Le Maurice. We have our lining. We have our interlayer, which is the tarlatan. And we have our front. Now, you could use the lining or the front as the front, or switch them rather. But um, one thing that I just wanted to mention is that they're made up of four pieces each. You're going to be cutting one front center, uh, two front sides, and two back sides. And basically the way it comes together is you have the curve of the front center matching, and then you seam your back to your front side. Uh, use quarter inch seam allowance for this. I would be very careful when I'm doing that just to make sure that you don't go over that because this is a very tight fitting um, bodice. Uh, and also make sure that you take these tiny, this tiny little dart in all three fronts, as well as this very, very thin dart in the back on all, um, all six of these. So what we're going to do now that we've done that, we've given it a good press, is we are gonna sandwich them together. And basically, if you sort of think about this like a sandwich, you're going to be putting, you know, I'll align this a little bit more perfectly afterwards. You're going to be putting your, let me make sure I'm getting this right. You're going to be putting your right sides to right sides. So imagine you're sort of sandwiching this, you're making a sandwich. It's going to be your two silk layers and then your tarleton layer. And then what you're going to do is you're going to seam, and I like to use an eighth inch for this. Um, the instructions might say quarter, but I like to give it a little bit more. You're going to seam, once you've matched these up perfectly with your your side seams and your front um, center seams and your darts, you're going to sew from the bottom all the way around the top and down the side. And then once you've done that, you might wanna just very um, carefully clip your corners and clip your curves so it turns well. Then you're gonna turn it inside out and then you're gonna fit it to your doll. So that's what we're going to do now. I will come back when that's been sewn together and show you how that looks and how we actually fit to the doll herself. So we're gonna be looking at the constructed bodice. Um, we have our uh, lining and we have our front and we have our tarleton interlayer. And as we said before, we stitched around the top and the, and the sides. Um, I used approximately a little over an eighth inch. I like to have a little bit more to work with because these are such tiny little bodices. But, you know, I think the most important thing is for you to fit as you go along. And then we run a stay stitch around the bottom just to give it some strength and overcast it. Um, one thing I didn't mention before is that um, you can sew this by hand or by machine, but I think when constructing this bodice, um, it's important to give it that extra strength that a machine requires. And in this time period, they would have been using the machine really almost all the time on their clothes, except for um, the hand finishing. So we're going to fit it to Flora, because she's the brown eyed girl. And I've turned it under and I think that that feels like it's a good fit. I mean, 
this is our first fitting, you know, and couture, you need to fit quite a bit as you go along. Um, but you can see that there's a nice overlap because we're going to have an overlap for our snaps. This is going to be put um, on with snaps rather than um, hooks and thread loops or eyes. So that, I feel like that's a good fit. And the next thing we're going to do, if I can just disconnect her, there you go. You got a little pin stuck in you, lady. And I also know she has a little chip there, poor thing. I gotta get a replacement arm for her, and that was my fault, not Carl's or the shops. We're going to then look at the skirt. The skirt is comprised of two pieces. Um, one is the outer skirt and the other is the lining. And you're gonna cut these both identically in size and shape using the same pattern. I'm going to find the center of my lining. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create what I guess would be called like a hanging lining. Um, both of these are going to be constructed uh, separately um, but attached to the waistband and also attached to the waistband separately and I'm going to show you why we do that. Um, we want this to have a finished appearance on the inside and the outside so I'm going to attach the lining, find my center, my proximate center and I have my approximate center. I'm going to attach, you know, there really is no right side to this lining, but there is a right side and a wrong side to the bodice. I'm going to attach this, or pin this rather, across the top. And I want you to notice something. There is some overlap here, and that's intentional. Um, we want that overlap because we want to be able to turn back the edges and um, and create our back opening. And you might actually want just a little bit of an extended back opening too. And I'll explain why um, when we get to that step. But hmm, that's interesting. I guess that isn't exactly the center. Let's see how off that is. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so I did not sew this down yet. And I'm gonna explain to you why um, when we get to that point. And that's because I'm not sure if um, if any of you have um, experienced this, and again, this is your outside, this is your inside. So you see, um, I'll, I'll quickly explain this. So you can see what we're, we're gonna have is a finished seam on the inside, and we're going to top stitch that when it's been sewn so it just stays down and gives you a nice smooth um, line. What I'm going to do is I'm only gonna sew up until this fold and I'll explain why. Um, when you, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever uh, encountered this, but um, you know, these, these uh, bodices can sometimes add a little bit of bulk. And I think when, sometimes when I've gotten to fitting the skirt, I realize that um, even though there's an overlap, sometimes there's a little less overlap because you're, um, you've got a little bulk there at the, the waist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew up until that fold where that overlap is going to happen. And then I'll be able to adjust it once we put this back on, um, on Flora. So we make sure that it, it's a good fit and that there's enough of an overlap at the back because she, she's got a little baby got back. She's got a, a nice figure to her. So we're gonna do that next. We're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance from this point to this point. Again, this is the inside, this is the outside, and then we're going to top stitch along the edge of that seam. So we have a nice flat seam. And then we're going to apply, so sort of like this is almost like a sandwich too. We're going to apply our skirt fabric to the right side. So you're basically going to have a, an encapsulated bodice and your seams will be encapsulated as well. It'll be a nice clean finish. Um, one thing I am going to show you is what that looks like when we're done, but you wanna make sure that you give this a nice press between steps. So, you know, sew this line, press it, top stitch it, then you're, we're gonna show you how we sew this on that sewn line and turn it over. Okay.
we're going to do that and we'll be back and show you the next step. So our skirt lining has been sewn in place. It was right side to right side of the inside of the bodice. We've only sewn it up until the point of that fold that we had established, which is our overlap. So you wanna make sure that you don't go past that. And then matching our seam line, we've sewn the silk to the front and we've done the same thing. We haven't sewn past that fold line. We are keeping that fold line open. So one thing that was done in the original garment, I think is a really nice finishing touch is you're going to want to make sure that you're pulling your silk away from your seam and you're going to top stitch close to your seam on the lining side. And this will just help it to lie flatly and then give it all a good press. You really wanna make sure you don't catch that um, silk front when you're doing your, your seaming. And then I'm gonna just show you how um, we're going to deal with these sides. So what we've done is, again, we've only top stitched and sewn up into the point of that fold. We're going to take a little clip into our seam allowance we're going to fold up that seam allowance and we're going to fold it over. So it gives you this little finished, well, you know, you just don't see this, the seam allowance there. Um, and then you've got this nice little reinforced back. So um, we're going to sew those up, but I wanted to just show you a little bit about how we're going to be, because it's much easier to see this when it's actually um, flat. We're not gonna be doing this now, but I wanna show you sort of the thought behind how we're going to be applying the beadwork. You're going to have a photography that's going to show you how to cut this beautiful sequined and beaded fabric. It's actually really um, wonderful to work with. Uh, unlike some other beaded or sequined fabrics, if you cut it carefully, you're not going to lose any beads. So if you could see, I've cut right along the edge of this line of beads, but they're all still together. I actually, I'm not an expert in fabric, but I kind of feel like they might be woven into the fabric. So there's just more strength. But um, I just wanna show you, we're going to be establishing sort of a center line. And in the original garment, this is the center. This is the medallion that was going to be the center. And these two pieces are going to wrap around the back. So again, it's easier to show this to you when it's flat because it's difficult to show you when we're uh, when the piece has been sewn together. So you'll notice that there are some blank spaces here on the sides and in the front. We're also going to be cutting a separate piece, and this is actually wider than we need. So it fills in those spots. I'm probably going to end it, I would say approximately here and here at these two points because we're going to be then putting a piece on the back. And the piece that goes on the back is going to be, let me just show you, it's going to be sort of matched to the piece that's on the front, and I'll show you what I mean. So imagine, um, and this is probably not gonna match perfectly, but it will just help to sort of show you. These little, um, this woven material, you know, it's pretty consistent. So what we're going to do is we're going to align our triangles so they actually match up. So it feels like it's a seamless piece of fabric. What we're going to do after we've done that, and again, I'll show this to you, is we're going to very carefully trim away, you know, probably not as close to the stitching line. Maybe we have one overlapping. So it just appears as though this is one piece of fabric. You see, if there's a little bit more than a couple of diamonds, it has a darker feeling, but um, this is just going to create that sort of uh, feeling of a continuous piece of fabric. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. But first, what we need to do is we need to sew up our skirt seams. There's going to be two separate skirt seams. We're going to be sewing, and we're keeping them loose for now. 
we're going to be sewing our silk together and we're going to be sewing it at approximately uh, three inches open from the waistline all the way down to the bottom. We're going to be doing the same thing exactly on the lining. And remember when I told you that we were going to perhaps leave a little bit extra here? Well, I just want to explain to you why we're doing that. Um, Fanny and the ladies, you know, and this is not fitting exactly because of their, their pins here, but you can see where their rear end comes, it gets to be a little bit tight. We want to have, we don't want to have any gapping there. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show this to you in the one of the next steps, is I'm not going to fold this over so it's exactly, and I'll have to see how I want to do this. I might want to um, have a little bit uh, more on the bottom and then have a little bit less on the top, but I might just have a little bit hanging over. So there's almost like a placket. So this won't gap. You won't see any gaps. You won't see any sort of like, um, uh, sort of, uh, gapes or openings in the back. It'll just sort of cover. And we're also going to be, as I said before, we're going to be using that panel in the back. So you're not really going to see that. And I'll show you how we, we hem that into the opening. Um, the other thing that we're going to want to do, and I like to do this actually before I move on to my seam, and this is just the way I do it, but you can do it however, um, whatever, however makes me most comfortable or you're used to. I just think it, it makes it a little bit simpler. Um, I'm going to just try to secure this at the back. And this is approximately where we want. This is really important. Again, you need to fit as you go along. I'm going to establish what I want my front hem to be. And remember, there's two separate pieces here. This is a floating lining. So those are both gonna be hemmed separately and independent of one another. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just gonna tuck this lining up. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, tuck this lining up, and I'm just going to try to see where I want the dress hem to fall. I'm kind of feeling like that might be a good place. Yeah, maybe you could actually even a little higher because we're going to have a line of sequined fabric that's actually gonna project below the hem just to give it a really beautiful little edge. And she might wanna go dancing and this doesn't really have like a, a train. We wanna see her beautiful shoes too. So I think that that actually feels like, for me, that feels like it's a good measurement. Now that I've established that, I'm going to establish the hem. Remember, these are exactly the same size on the lining. Now, we want the lining not to go below the hem of the skirt fabric. So it's, they're going to be hemmed at two different lengths. I think, you know, once you've established this, you're probably going to want it to be, you know, a good quarter to a half an inch shorter. For the lining because this is just really meant to give the the skirt some body but it's not meant to be seen from the outside so i feel like that feels pretty good so this is what i was saying in terms of um what i like to do while the the dress is still flat is i like to give it a very very light press and i'm also going to trim off all this horrible fraying um you know and I'm handling this so you see it frays pretty easily, but you're not gonna see any of that framing because you're gonna be turning it under like you would any other hem. I'm gonna give it a light press. I'm going to, after I've trimmed off this, I'm going to actually turn it up. I'm gonna press it under and I'm going to um, press that as well. And the reason why I'm doing this is that it's just so much easier to have your you know, an even hem when your piece is still flat. Then I'm going to open it up again and I'm gonna sew it together again as separate layers. These two layers are going to be seen together and this, the lining is going to be seen together. Um, and I'm going to be sewing that from the very bottom all the way up until about three inches below the waistline, as I said. 
So when we come back, I'm going to show that to you finished. And, and the, also the nice thing is that, you know, you're going to have your raw edges and this is up to you. Um, you're going to have your, your seam and then you're going to have your raw edges and they're going to be facing each other. You could pink them. Um, you could um, over, uh, overcast them. I don't think you need to bind these seams. I just think it's a lot of work because no one's really ever going to see that because it, they'll be hidden by, uh, by each other. But again, you're gonna to wanna to sew that, you're going to press it, and then you're going to have your, your pressed lines that you can also use to match up your edges. That'll just make it easier when you do hem it, when you flip it up and they're already pressed for you, you'll be able to just sew them in position really easily without having to figure out exactly what that consistent hem is. So I'm going to go back, I'm gonna do that and come back and show that to you. And then we'll talk about our next step, which is going to be the application of the sequence. I know, you know, you can actually sort of see how, it, how it's going to work here in a way, but we'll, we'll be doing this again. You know, you're, what you're basically doing is you're, you're applying sort of like a patchwork, different pieces. And this is going to wrap around the back. This is going to wrap around the back. And then you're going to have some filler that you're going to also apply before you apply this piece. But it's really about trying to match these pieces up as closely as possible, um, as we had discussed. And another thing is when you do do that, you're only going to be sewing um, on the bodice. You're not going to be attaching this to the front because you're going to want this to hang really nicely from the waistline. But we'll get to that point and we will show you what it looks like and how to do it. So I will be back once this is hemmed and put together. And again, there's going to be a little bit of uh, overlap here just to make sure that we've got um, a little placket so her behind doesn't show. Um, and I don't know if I had actually already mentioned this, but because this is such a close form fitting garment, we're not going to be um, fitting her over her slip. We're not gonna be using the slip because it's just gonna add too much um, bulk here. So we will be doing that and we'll be back and show you the next steps. So her underdress is finished. Um, we've turned under the seam allowance and we have slip stitched it to the lining on both sides. And we've done our two hems, we've pressed them. You notice that the, the hem here is shorter, so you're not going to see that for the lining. I'm gonna be honest with you, I made a little boo-boo here, which I would have corrected if I had more silk. Um, when I was cutting, you know, you have to be really careful, and I have to be careful. There's a little, I made a little slit, so I just put some, um, a little patch over it. And the good news is that once you put your, your beadwork over, you're never gonna see that. If I had more silk, I would have redone it especially if it was for a client, I would never um, give that to somebody, but I'm being honest with you. Um, I actually didn't take this down to about, this isn't about three inches, it's a little less than three. Um, I think it's about two and a quarter, about two and a quarter. Um, I think that'll be fine. I just don't like it to be more open because there's gapping down there. It's not really gonna matter, um, but I think she'll still be able to get into the dress with no issue. But once you cover this, you're going to be um, hiding that a bit um, with your sequins. Now, here comes the fun part. We're not going to sew the closure in here yet. We're just gonna keep it pinned, making sure that it's sitting on her where we want it to be. And I think that feels good. We're now going to start to place our, um, our sequined over pieces. And I'm just going to say, I'm, we're not going to sew anything down yet. We're just going to sort of position it and see how we like it. Um, I probably have to raise her arms a little bit. I'm sorry, lady. Um, we want to have uh, everything as centered as possible. So, here um, are two center diamonds. I'm trying to center that. Um, we're going to cut these pieces a little bit larger than we need them, and you'll see why. Um, but 
what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be pinning them. We're just going to be seeing how they sit. We may need to make a few little snips here and there. We've already cut our, um, our top medallions out, that piece out. And we know that we want that to be exactly centered. And you see it's, it's longer here, which is absolutely fine because you're going to be trimming it once the, this piece is over just to make a really beautiful little uh, detailed hem down here. But we don't wanna do that yet. We wanna get it on the doll. We want to see um, how, the, how this looks once it's, um, once it's laid over the underdress or the foundation dress. And I'm just sort of like pinning. Again, you want to make sure that is as, as symmetrical as possible. And there's this great, um, great stretch to this fabric. So you're gonna see that when we get to the back, you're gonna see what I mean. Um, I actually have already cut this to the width that I think it should be. So let me just do one thing here. I'm just gonna pin it in several places in the front. And then I'm gonna look at it from the back. Make sure that it's sitting well. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around. And I'm going to just see, cause we want that to, those points to go over. So this is all, again, we're not sewing this, we're just, playing with it a little bit. Okay, so that is her, that's the front. And I, what I was gonna say is that there's this great kind of give to this fabric. There's a little stretch to it. And I think you wanna use that stretch to your advantage. Um, it will help to sort of like form this in a really pleasing way. So what we're gonna do now, I'm going to just pin these two a little bit tightly. Again, we're stretching it a little bit, making sure that it's symmetrical, as symmetrical as we can make it. And this fabric does have a little bit of a, it's not perfectly straight. It has a little body to it, which is nice because there's a beautiful hang to it. So let's just see that from the front. Yeah, we're gonna be tying that down. We're gonna be stitching that down to the bodice when we get there. We just really want to see what the effect is. It looks really pretty. So now that we've pinned this in place and my pins already are wanting to come out, we're going to take a look at the, the back. So what we've done is we've cut this front piece to, to size. And what I mean by that is that there's going to be a cutting diagram or a photo showing you how to cut. It is longer because we're going to trim it off at the bottom, but we've cut very carefully along these diamonds here. And the reason for that is we're going to apply this back panel probably first. We're going to find the center. That's the center. We're going to um, cut down. I know I'm saying like when I say this is the center, we're going to cut down a center of diamonds. And this time you're probably gonna lose some sequins, which is perfectly fine. Um, you're going to cut down the center and you are going to um, fold your cut lines, your cut edges. And this is such a joy to work with something which is such um, so light and airy. Um, you're going to cut down, you're going to fold this in, you're going to wrap it around the cut edges of your actual, um, of your silk, you're going to pin it in place. And then you're going to see how this will overlap on the back. And when I was talking about this before, you know, this is really just about like making sure that it's couture. I mean, it all has to be fit to her. Um, once you've um, cut this and you've wrapped it around, you're gonna have a little bit of extra here. You're going to probably gather that up a bit, but we'll get there. Um, so the really the point, whole point of this is, is to, once you've sewn your back panel only to the bodice, only to the back bodice, and you've wrapped it around the top, you're going to then pin your wrap and pin your side pieces over, and then you're going to match up your diamonds. So, you know, this isn't going to be like skin tight or anything, but we want it to be, 
you know, just a little bit of, um, if you can see here, there's a little bit of, of give here. If you look at this original garment or the sample garment, there's a little bit of give down here, meaning it's not wrapping so snugly. So this is really something you're gonna have to do by eye and by fitting to your doll. There is no specific, I think that this piece, the front piece, you can cut to size. This this back piece, I think you can actually just play with a little bit and see the effect that you're trying to get. I'm actually thinking it might be sort of nice once it's sewn down, you know, of course you have to sew it down and match up your, is to, um, once we've sewn it down, and again, I'll show this to you, we're going to stitch this edge down, matching up the diamonds perfectly. Then we're going to go into the back and we're gonna trim out from the back so you don't have a double layer of sequence because you want this to be sort of elegant and airy. So <laughs> if I can disengage her, I am going to make that cut. Let's see, here's a pin. You know, I might even do it a little bit above my my line, so uh, uh, rather above the the um, end of that opening or the beginning of that opening. So we know we're going to have it overlap here and here. Um, so let's do that. Let's actually cut this. Where are my scissors? You know, you probably don't want to use your good scissors for this um, <laughs> because they are sequins and they're hard. And but I'm going to do it because I don't have my paper scissors near me, and this is a big no no but I'm doing it anyway. So I'm sorry I'm setting such a bad example. Okay, so there's your back opening, okay? We can take everything else off right now, um, including these pieces. And let's see, see there's a lot of layers to this. It's fun, it's like, it's like a, a jigsaw puzzle, um, but it's gonna have a really beautiful effect. So here we are. And what we're going to do is we're gonna overlap this. So you see, I'm giving it kind of like a quarter of an inch. We're gonna overlap it, and there's gonna be a little bit here that we're gonna need to gather up in the back when we sew this down. So our next step is going to be to sew this to wrap it around and sew it to either side of that opening. We're gonna to have to take the dress off the doll to do that. Um, you might even wanna fit that first before you do it, but you know that you're gonna to wanna to start it. So let's say this inside point um, is at the top and these top points wrap over the top of the, of the dress. We're only gonna sew here and here. We're not sewing down to the top yet because we need to see how this fits and we're going to be cutting it and fitting it to her and making sure that it fits perfectly. So I'm going to do that. I will be back and show you the next step. And again, when you're working with this, just make sure you're as careful as possible when you're working with this, um, with the, the fabric because I snipped it and I don't have any more silk to repair it. So be careful when you're working with your fabric. You have enough silk if you make a little boo-boo, but probably not enough to cut out an entire um, new skirt. So we'll get going and I'll be back and I will show you the next step. So we've found the center of our back panel. We have slid it down to the point of the opening of the back of the dress. We've turned under or over <laughs> under the, um, the edges. And on this side, I'm gonna show you what it looks like finished. We've actually sewn it down close to the edge with a small, probably, I don't know, it's more like a running stitch, but it's, we're really tacking it down. We're making sure it's really on there because it's gonna pull a little bit. We want it to make sure it has some strength. And then um, after I had done that, I trimmed out some of the extra um, uh, diamonds back there just to really reduce the bulk. And then again, we're not sewing it to the bodice yet. We're leaving it open. I only placed a pin here just to try to get an idea of where that center diamond of this pattern will fall on the center seam. 
because really this dress is about um, about symmetry. When you do the closure, you're not going to have it meet. The pattern's not going to meet because you've taken some away and you've overlapped it. But the, really the important thing is just to get a nice, um, clean overlap here. So when we overlap it, it kind of meets a little bit. Um, I think once that's done, probably after the doll is dressed, I might take up a little bit of gathering here at the bottom just to take up some of that fullness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish this side. Again, I've only tacked it down along the top and really not very far, um, definitely not past the, the, um, the underarm seam. And what we're going to do after that is since we've sort of found our, our front and our back, we're going to then again find the center. Let me see, there you go. Find the center of the bodice and determine how much we're actually going to need as coverage. And I'm thinking what I probably will do is I probably, hmm, I think I probably will remove, maybe just do two rows of diamonds. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna keep it as it is. Because maybe I'll just remove this one because this is really covering it up, but I just want enough of an overlap. I don't really wanna see that diamond down there, but I want enough of an overlap so you're not seeing any um, areas of silk. That's the next thing we're going to do. And most likely what I'm going to do is I will sort of, I'll be pinning this, I'll be looking at it, I'll be sort of playing with it a little bit. I'll probably um, attach this. Then I'll also see where there's an overlap here. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm matching up the sides. But first I wanna get this in place and I wanna get the least estimate the position of this um, center motif and then move on to, oh, just poked myself, and then um, move on to how it's going to resolve in the back because we know that this is in the right place. Um, we need to get the front in the right place and then we can start to um, align our diamonds and do our connecting points. So I'm going to do the front and Sort of work on the position of this and then come back and show you the next step. So we've placed trim around the front edge and we've tucked it over. You know, you might even want to go in and sort of like take out some of these sequins. We'll try it on her in a second and see how it fits. But um, this part you can really do without you know, having it on her, you just are, you know, you've placed that little trim I've cut away where I think um, that center medallion is going to be placed. You know, I might even cut this away a little bit. You just sort of have to like pin it and take a look. It's not like there's one way of doing this, but I sort of think that that's really, that's pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin this in place. Maybe I'll actually pin it along the edge. You know, for such a um, sort of elaborate um, material, it's actually really easy to work with. Okay, and then just like, you know, take a look at it. So when I'm looking at this, I feel like, you know, we might be able to get rid of a little bit down there. I hope I don't cut through my silk again. But you know, this is just really, you know, you're, you've got to play with it a little bit and just see, you know, how it falls and what effect you're trying to get. But at this point, I think we can probably try it on her again. You could do that work flat. Um, I can get it on here. Come on. Let's go. Okay, you've got to raise your arms. And get it over your rear end. 
Maybe I don't actually have this in the right place. Let's see. Uh, I think I do. That's the front. So again, you know, you have to keep fitting as you go on. And you can see, actually, I'm not sure if you can see, because of the addition of those sequins, it's become a little bit bulkier. So we might actually want to remove some of them. And we're going to tack that in a little bit. So here we go. I mean, this is probably where it's going to sit on her bus line. And this is where we actually just start to fit it to her figure. So again, this is a, this fabric has a little bit of a stretch, you're gonna notice. So when we're, let me just overlap this a little bit to make it feel a little bit more realistic to what it's going to be. In terms of the closures, we're gonna fix up that little bit down there. Okay. So this is where our matching comes in. We know that we're going to be wrapping this around and it's probably going to, to meet almost exactly at the back of her, of the opening of the dress, which is kind of a nice, it's not a, it's not a, I don't think it's an accident that there's nothing that's really an accident, but it's nice that that sort of works out that way, you know? Um, so we're just like, again, we're just playing with this. We're looking to see how it, it fits together. Uh, if I can get my pins to, to stay. And because there's a little bit of stretch again, you're sort of like stretching it a little bit, pulling it. You're gonna be sewing this down so I wouldn't be too worried about, um, about misshaping the fabric. You're not going to damage it in any way, but you're just really trying to get the best possible sort of effect. And that's what, you know, couture is. So here we go. This is the front. And let's just see how that hangs. Yeah, I think that that's, that's actually looking interesting. Um, so you notice that this is longer at the bottom here. What we're going to do, once we've sewn this in place at the bust, and again, we're only sewing above the skirt line. Um, we'll probably sew this down, I apologize. We'll probably sew this down. But we're only really attaching it along the bust line. And the reason for that is that we want this, this beaded piece to sort of float a little bit and have a little bit of uh, life of its own. It should not feel like it's, she's, you know, encased in a sausage casing. But I think the, the one thing that I think is going to be interesting is that once we've, you know, we're going to fix that again, we're going to do a little bit of zhuzhing there. Um, what we're going to start to do now is see where our pattern aligns. Now, uh, let me just bring this in a little bit. I'm probably going to want to tack that down a little bit just to give it some shape. Um, you can see that these are sort of like wrapping around, which is exactly what we want. Now what you have to start to look at is the side. You know, where does the side actually make sense to join? And looking at this, I would sort of hazard a guess that that might be the line that we want. So I'm not sure if that's showing up in the in the camera, and this is only gonna be attached. Let me just see, I think that actually might be too much. Um, this is only going to be attached to itself. It's not being attached to the, um, to the, the underdress, to the silk part. It's just being attached on itself, so it's almost like it's a floating um, additional piece. Let me just see here. I actually think, what about that? You know, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to match up these. They're not going to match up perfectly, but, you know, this has, as I said, it has a little give to it. So you can probably um, stretch it a little bit. It's still going to hang because it's going to have some weight. Let's see. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. And then when that gets pulled in, and we 
have a little bit of fullness there, I think it's going to be really, I think that's right. It feels right. You know, and again, we're going to tack it down here so it's closer to the, the body, only along that bodice. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to, um, we're going to see where we match up these diamonds. And that actually looks like it's falling pretty nicely right there. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it comes in a little bit more. Maybe that's the... You know, and this is all up to you. I mean, there's no one way of of doing this. If you want it to be a little tighter, make it tighter. If you want it to be a little looser, make it looser. Um, but there's going to be a little bit of a gather there, that's for sure. So I think that that feels like it's going in the right direction. I mean, there's going to be a little zhuzhing that's going to happen. But... You're going to have a little bit of an overlap. I think that that feels, that feels right. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but basically, again, you're just sort of like, you know, you're pinning this, you're seeing what makes sense um, from a sort of like an attachment point and a pattern and a symmetry. And then with that said, you're going to... Do your best again to match up your diamonds. And it's gonna, you know, you're gonna need to do a little zhuzhing. And when you've got your diamonds matched up, you're going to sew. I would probably, if I was you, I would actually start on the bodice. I would sew down to the bodice so you actually have it, um, some structure there. And then I would start to, and I would sew around, I would sew down. Um, but once you start to sew to this, I probably would stop sewing. You know, you might want to sew to the silk, oh, maybe around from here to here. And then once you start going into your diamonds, you're not going to be sewing to the silk. You're just going to be sewing to this itself so it will hang. So there'll be a nice sort of like a... A nice hanging um, quality to that you know you want it to have a little you want it to appear as an overlay you don't want it to appear as you know this tight because then you don't get that beautiful sheer uh, shimmering effect so I think that's what we're going to do and I'm probably just going to do a little bit more pinning here and see where our first diamonds fall. Yeah, I actually think that that works out pretty well. Again, we're gonna gather that up a little bit, tighten it up, so we won't have a little bit of a, she won't have a little poof there. But I feel like that is in a good place. Yeah. And then let's just see if we were to continue this over, would it play out? Yeah, I think it does. It's probably, yeah, I think it's like looking at the, the sample, it might be a little looser here. So we might want to make it just, you know, maybe we move them out, um, you know, one diamond. And that's what's so great about this. You know, the diamonds already exist on this. You don't have to try to figure out how um, they come together because you're just basically like a, that, as I said, like a jigsaw puzzle, you're just putting them together. And that kind of feels like it. Okay, I think that that might be it. I wish that we were sewing together so you could tell me your opinion. It's always so much more fun to sew with other people. But I think that that feels right. Okay, so we're going to um, do our best to take this off of her. And I think we're probably okay. It didn't really catch anything. Uh, or maybe it did. I think it might be catching her in her pantalettes. Let's see if it will slide off for us. Yes, it will. Well, no, it won't. It's a little bit of a... You know, these, I don't know if you remember Michael saying, but um, on the Titanic, 
the skirts were so tight, they actually had to throw the ladies into the lifeboats because they were, there were these, you know, like column, column skirts and they were very tight and they couldn't lift their, their legs over the, uh, over the railings, which is awful. But um, I guess that's what fashion is. It's like a little crazy sometimes. So I think, um, I think we're in a good place. I'm going to sew this in position around the bodice. And as I said, probably down to about here, or maybe even down to here, and then start to only sew together the sequined pieces. And then when we're done sewing together sequined pieces, you know, maybe even before, I'm going to cut away the areas that we don't need underneath so there's not all this overlap. Now that I have an idea of where those areas are, it's going to make it much simpler to pin them together. So when we come back, we will have that um, hopefully in a good place. So here she is with her assembled patchwork construction. And I think if you can sort of like look at it closely, you really can't see where it's been pieced together because there's so much reflection and these beautiful beads. But there are two lines here where these two pieces start. There are lines that come down here and this is our center back. And these have been brought in, wrapped around the front, sewn down with tiny running stitches. I think when you get to the diamond shapes, you might want to use just like a simple little like, not a running stitch, but maybe just like a little over overcast, I guess you would call it, because you don't want those stitches to really show. They're not really going to show anyway. And the other thing that I want to show you is that the, the back of the skirt is longer than the front. So it's like not really quite like a train, but basically it's just another row. It gives her a little bit of an elegant sweep. If you wanted to make it even longer, you could do that. But I think that this, um, the way that Michael designed this is really very lovely and appropriate and, and it works. I also took a little bit, I'm going to take a few stitches in here just to make sure that doesn't gap. But I also took a couple of gathering stitches here just to bring in some of that fullness and to sort of tighten it up around her, um, her, her rear. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add her sleeves and there's going to be two parts to that. I'll show you on this finished piece. We're going to be doing a small piece of twill um, tape to act as an uh, as a shoulder band. So, sort of like a, probably from here to here and here to here. And these sleeves are actually put on in a kind of an interesting way. Um, they are sewn together. There is a seam here, but it's basically just a tube. And the sleeve is joined. You know, there's this um, kind of pretty, uh, these points here, the diamond points. It's basically just the points are sewn around the lower arm armhole and then the points are sewn on top of the, the band. So we're going to do that now. And I'll come back when the sleeves are set in and we can show you the finished dress. And then we'll move on to the, um, the opera cloak. So we've put one of her sleeves on her gown. I just want to show you the steps involved in that. Um, there is a pattern that indicates the sleeve and it's going to be cut out on the fabric uh, using this as a guideline. So basically you're going to have, this is your top of your sleeve, this is your bottom of your sleeve. Um, you're going to have a series of points on the top and a series of points um, at the at the wrist or at the, the bottom of the sleeve. Um, you're going to uh, right sides together, um, sew this long seam together. There's no need to overcast it because this is not going to fray. I would use probably about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You might want to trim that when you're done just to avoid bulk. 
And then before you put the sleeve on, you're going to, of course, on your doll, you're going to fit a the cotton twill tape as the shoulder strap. Um, I've only done this on the outside because I'm indicating for my self placement and um, I'm going to then sew it with these edges um, inside, sew these edges down. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do, and I'm gonna show you on this dress, is you're actually going to be attaching those tabs. You're not, you're not sewing them in. You're actually sort of having the tabs face down um, along the bottom of the arm, um, uh, of the armhole, where there really isn't an armhole here, but this is where the dip is in the bodice. And you're going to be sewing those down. And then you're going to sew the other tab of the other points onto the shoulder strap. So because there's a little bit of, um, when you do sew the points on, you can see um, some of that cotton twill tape. You're gonna take another piece of, and I'll show you actually on her. You're gonna take another piece of a row of diamonds and you're going to sew them on top, you know, basically alternating where the spit between the, the um, points that you've already sewn down to cover that up. And it's going to really give it a more of an opaque feeling. Um, I think I added maybe one, two, three of them. So I think this is four, but you know what? You just cut a strip out and you can put it on and see what you prefer. So um, when we're done with that, I'm gonna come back and show you um, the finished dress. She has not actually, she's not in her final, um, her final closure, but we're gonna be putting snaps in the back. And I just wanna make sure that I have this in the right place. Snaps in the back, two snaps, and we're going to be creating um, rosettes that are going to go in the front. And you probably can see I've actually, um, tightened up that opening a little bit so it's a little bit tighter and she won't have any gaps. So this is how she's looking. And I think, you know, before I before I sew on that other one, I'm just gonna make sure that her bodice is really um, centered on her front. And just, you know, that's why we, we fit it and we pin it and we just see how it looks. And I think that looks much better. And now I'm going to put on the, you know, make sure that the fit is right before you sew on your shoulder straps. But now I can sew on those shoulder straps and they're approximately in the same place that I had them before. I'm just gonna mark a little pin where I want those. You know, and it's, you don't want that to be too tight. She still has to move her arms. Um, but it should be snug because that's going to be holding the seam uh, or rather the sleeve in position. So we will go away and do that. And then I'll come back and show you um, the finished dress. Here's just an example of the rosettes on one of the, um, on one of the sample dresses. You can see it's just very simple. Um, I think these are probably double rosettes, but I don't really need to explain to you how to make a rosette. It's, it's just, you know, you might have your own way of doing it, but um, these look like double rosettes that have been sewn together. And then we're gonna embellish those with a couple of uh, sequins and beads that are left over from your fabric. That's the one thing I did not tell you, is that as you're cutting these things out and you know you have these little scraps, save them. I mean, don't, um, not even for this project, you know, just save them because these are great little um, glass and uh, glass beads and sequins and they can really make some wonderful trim for something else. So I will um, go back, I will finish the sleeves and I will show you one rosette finished and then we will move on to the, um, to the upper coat. So both sleeves are on now and you can sort of see how that works with the, the shoulder strap. It's a very pretty, pretty design they came up with for that. And now we're going to make rosettes. And I don't know if you have what your favorite way is of making a rosette, but um, I know that 
the rosettes on the sample costume look with their double rosettes, which I think is probably a great idea. I'm going to make these out of seven inches of the ribbon that's included in your kit. And then I'm going to take a few of those loose sequins and beads and things and just sort of cluster them in the center. And that makes it like a, I think it's a pretty little effect and you'll see um, that's what's on the shoes as well that are going to come with the kit. And we're going to put one, and we put one here, we're going to put one here, then we're going to do our back closure again, which is going to be two snaps and it should be fitted to her when you're doing that. And then we're going to move on to the opera cloak. So the opera coat is a really beautiful little garment and it's very, very simple to make. You're going to see that you have three pieces. You have your back, which you're going to cut on the fold. You're going to cut two of these. You're going to use the silk both for the inside of the garment and for the rather the lining and for the outside of the garment. You're going to have a coat front and you're going to cut four of these and you're going to have a coat sleeve and you're going to cut four of these as well. So just showing you the sample garment, you can hear my little dog, I think, barking. Showing you the sample garment, it's a really simple construction. The lapels are actually just formed um, in one piece. There are no seams there. So what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be making the lining and the outer shell, and we're going to be sewing those together. And I'll show you how we're going to be doing that. But before I do that, I just want to also say that in your instructions, there are going to be some uh, visuals to show you how you can cut these pieces out of your sequined fabric. Um, you're going to need a long strip to trim the bottom, and you can see that here. You're going to need two long strips to trim the bottoms of the sleeves. And you can see that here, wraps around the sleeve in a really pretty way. And then you're gonna need two additional long strips to trim around the lapels all the way down the front and a little bit around the back. So I'm gonna do something a little different. I think if you just notice the embellishment here and you can do whatever you want but if that's what the, you know some of the fun of this is is that you can have some fun um because you're going to have or you should have some leftover uh medallions and motifs i'm actually going to use a medallion on the back instead of um instead of the the diamonds i think that's kind of pretty i mean it might be a little bit over the top but um, in this period, things were over the top. And I'm also thinking that I'm going to use one of these little shapes and do it as an inset on the sleeve. I think that could be pretty too. So again, you know, you're gonna have leftover, not a lot um, because this sequin fabric is really precious. You're gonna have some leftover. You can just sort of like, you know, play and have fun like they would um, in a couture house. And you imagine that you're sort of like um, Jean-Philippe Worth or one of the other, or Doucet or Paquin, one of the designers, and you're, you're coming up with a creation for your client. So um, we will start with the shell. Uh, it will be sewn on the shoulders, and we will be joining the shoulders together and leaving that little bit here for the lapel. Um, they're going to be two sides and you don't have to worry about how you cut these because there's no right or wrong side to the silk. But if you're using another type of fabric, make sure that you're doing, um, you're cutting these uh, in mirrors. We're going to do that. We're going to do that on both um, the uh, outer shell and the lining. We're also going to be sewing the side seams. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be laying them right side to right side together. 
Um, so imagine that this is sewn together at, this, at the shoulders and you have a, a lining piece that's made of three pieces and you have an outer shell that's made of three pieces. And then we're actually going to be sewing all the way around the piece. So we're basically creating a you know a, a easy um, version of a lining. We're probably going to be leaving it open at the bottom for turning. You know, maybe about um, an inch and a half, two inches. And I'm going to go away and do that, and come back and show you the next step. Here is our opera coat or evening coat sewn right side to right side, turned inside out. We've um, clipped our notches here, we've clipped here, we've clipped around the, the neckline just to make sure that we have a nice even turn, and then we've pressed everything. We're not going to start decorating yet. We're going, we have one more step before we can do that, and obviously that's, it's missing one thing, and that's sleeves. So what we're going to do, is we've already cut out our pieces, um, our four pieces, and there are a couple of steps here. I think this is a really smart um, design by Michael and the team. Basically, you're going to seam these right side to right side together on this long seam. Then you're going to, it's good, you're gonna love how this turns out, then you're going to turn it over. <laughs> of course, I'm doing it the wrong way. You're going to turn it over so the seam runs vertically. And you're going to sew exactly from this notch all the way around to the other notch. And then you're going to turn it inside out onto itself. And you've got this great, this great little sleeve that's actually lined and there's no raw anything within the seam, within the sleeve itself. It's all self-lined and really beautifully, um, beautifully done, beautifully designed. So um, after I did the, the sleeve and within the seam allowance, I basted it together. This is a little bit more than a base, but um, we're just trying to keep that, uh, that edge together so it won't, really move or do anything. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it inside out. We're gonna find our center of that, that sleeve and we're going to match center to the armhole, rather center to the shoulder and center of the sleeve, top of the sleeve. And then we're just going to start to pin it together. And you're gonna see that that little bit that you that you have here, in terms of that little notch, is going to be just enough for you to use it as a seam allowance. I don't know if you can see me here. Um, but basically what I like to do, and I don't know uh, how you do it, but I like to start from the top of the sleeve and sort of just like work it around a little bit and see if there's any area that needs to be eased or, um, are there any adjustments that need to be made? Then I might baste it together just to see that it it fits well. And this looks actually looks like it fits really nicely. They did a nice job designing this. Um, so I might not baste it. I have, let's just see how it goes because I think this is exactly the way this is supposed to fall. And let's just see here. Yeah, that feels right. We've got the seams meeting where they should be meeting. Yeah, I don't know if I need to base this, but if you're not sure about it, always baste. You know, um, the basting is really going to help you and let you know if anything is off. You know, if it doesn't feel like it's falling and you can never really tell. Um, with pins, you know, but it, it feels right. Um, it looks like it fits really well. So what I'm going to do now is using a, a back stitch, a tiny back stitch. I'm going to go all, so all the way around that armhole. The reason why I'm using a back stitch is not only for strength, 
but it really helps to create a smooth sleeve, sleeve cap because you're using tight little stitches and there's no chance of it sort of puckering or you know any of that stuff that we just don't want on a sleeve. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'll do the other sleeve and then come back and we can start to talk about um, decorating this with our pre-cut sequin strips and pieces. So our opera coat or evening coat is assembled. We've set the sleeves in. We've trimmed the seam and we have overcast it to neaten it and to reduce any bulk. We've also just tried it on the doll and wanted to see how these look in terms of their folds. Um, you'll see that uh, the sample garment has a little deeper fold. This one doesn't have as deep a fold, but I think it's just something for you to, to put on and see what fit you prefer. So now here comes the, the fun part. We're going to be trimming this based on the directions that were given in the cutting diagram with these different pieces of trim. And there's going to be several applications. Um, the, <clears throat> I'm not gonna say these in terms of the order, but I think that um, you're going to have trim that goes vertically and you can see it wraps around this and basically extends onto the lapel and sort of hangs over the edge of the lapel, which is really pretty. And it stops at the neckline. We have the bottom, which is cut to shape. And again, this is your project. You can cut it to whatever shape you want, but this is the suggestion. Um, as per Michael and the team. And then you have this gorgeous sleeve trim. So it's gonna be like this really beautiful, deep trim and it's gonna add some weight. So I had mentioned that there were some things I was thinking of doing that were a little different than the sample garment. And again, this is your decision. I mean, this is, this is the design as they've provided it, but you can have more fun with it. Um, you can see how they've taken a, um, a bit out here. I'm not sure if that's something that I wanted for mine. So I'm just gonna continue it. Um, and really the goal is to find the center of that back and to have this be perfectly symmetrical on the garment. Just wrap around and end where it ends. Um, in terms of the sleeves, I just thought it would be so pretty, you know, and perhaps I'll do this and, and I'll look at it and say, oh, I don't like it, but you can, you can always take things off. I was thinking that right on that center line of the sleeve, it might be pretty to put a little medallion just to give it a little bit more emphasis and a little bit more weight. Um, and these can be harvested from your, your fabric. These are the smaller diamonds. And then in the back, I think I like this very much, but I think that this is just, you're gonna have some of these left over. I just think this is so pretty. You know, I'm not quite sure um, if I would want it to do that or I want it to do that. I mean, put your put the, the coat on your doll and, and see. I actually think that kind of feels more a little like exotic and oriental. I think this is kind of like, that's what this kind of reminds me of, like a, a ballet russe type of a, of a um, coat or Russian or something, you know, um, exotic. So, well, at least exotic for that time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to sew these down. I'll come back and I'll show you the finished project um, in terms of the coat. But again, just have fun with this. I mean, this is your your design. This is your sort of your taste. Um, you know, don't limit yourself. Just see what you want to come up with. You know, maybe I might actually just wrap a little bit more of this around the neckline just to give it or, you know, you've got a, a whole bunch of this, of these leftovers, these little scraps that get left over from your cutting. You know, you can just sort of like cut them out and fill them in where you want. Um, you're really just tacking these down again with a small running stitch. It's nothing um, fancy. It's just meant to keep them in position to lay flat and not pucker. Uh, but have fun with this. I think this is kind of the, the fun part. I mean, this is a fun project, but this is sort of the, 
the fun part of it. I can't decide what I like better. I don't know. We'll see when we come back. And maybe I won't like either one of them. We'll see. Okay, I'll be back. So before you sew anything down in terms of your trim, you're going to want to pin it and just see like the effect that you're going for. I think, I think this feels right. I mean, really what you're trying to do is get symmetry on the left and the right hand side. So everything feels like it's symmetrical. You might have a little bit of zhuzhin you have to do down here. Like I think that this might come up a little bit, wrap around. Um, but this just gives you the effect of what you're trying to do before you sew anything, because why do something and then decide you don't like it? And you might not like it, and you can easily take these things off. But as I'm sort of looking at this, I put a little bit of a, a little trim around the neckline, just so this feels like it's spilling from something. And then maybe, again, these diamonds on the shoulders. But I would recommend that you pin it all in place first, put it on the doll, take a look at it, see what you think, um, and then start your embellishments. And then um, sew it sort of one part at a time. And what you're gonna wanna do is where you get to these areas of overlap, you're gonna want to cut away. Um, here, I don't think I'm gonna do any cutting away, but here I have, I've cut away a little bit here so you don't have too much um, overlap. And then here on the sleeves, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut it on that diagonal and then cut this on a diagonal and wrap it around. You just want that sort of, that overlap to be facing the back um, of the coat. So, you know, looking at this and thinking, do I mind having some silk showing here? I really don't, but I think that you could, if you didn't like it, you could put another row of, and maybe I will do that, another row of um, diamonds. I think that's the way it is in the in the garment that the the guys made. Um, it kind of, that might be really pretty just to fill it in a little bit so there's no, make it feel a little more finished. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to sew this down and then come back, show you the finished piece and we're gonna start the turban. So the evening or opera coat is done. I just wanted to show you, I wanted to make sure I can get it all on the camera, um, some variations that I did. This was the original, and as you can see, the treatment on the collar, there was some extra um, added up to the top here, and there was a panel of uh, additional sequins that was put onto the back and there's a little divot taken out of here almost as if it's sort of like mirroring that um, and there were also uh, some uh, larger pieces taken out of the sleeve so it's a very sort of a geometric um, pattern you know when I was looking at it I thought you know there's so much great um, there's so many great embellishments that are left on the fabric extra I didn't put any on the on the top of the collar. I sort of liked it to um, just to see the silk, but I thought how it might be kind of fun to maybe just put a few around the neckline and then maybe add this sort of medallion shape uh, to the back just to give it a little bit more glitz. And I did the same thing on the sleeves. They both have identical medallions on them. So, you know, this is really something that you can um, again, make your own. Um, you can do whatever uh, you want with it in terms of embellishment. Um, again, you know, there, there are several different ways of doing it. Um, either, you know, this sort of, uh, this sort of trim, um, the treatment here and the neckline, um, or, you know, you can do some variations if you want. Um, really, the choice is up to you. The design is, um, is about couture and about customization. So uh, there we have the um, evening coat or the opera coat. So we're going to go on to the turban now. And the turban has a couple of different pieces. I'm going to start with the silk and the beaded pieces. You're going to cut a sequined or beaded piece. You're going to cut one. 
you're going to cut a piece of silk and then you're going to seam them along the long edge. When you're done with that, you're going to turn them inside out. There's a little tiny dart here in the center, if you can see here in the pattern. You're gonna take that little tiny dart just to give it some shape. And then we're going to come back and we're going to run with a double or a strong thread. We're gonna run a double row of gathering stitches around the side or, or around the curved side. So we're going to um, do that and we'll come back and show you the next step. You know, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm actually also going to try to maybe press this just very, very gently from the back just to try to get that um, nice uh, clean edge here at this at this bottom. So um, we will see you when that's done. So we've gathered up that curved edge with the double thread, just like you would with cartridge pleating. Uh, I would also suggest that maybe you look at the video um, with uh, Michael and uh, Leo on the pink pearl fishers um, turban. This is going to be a little similar, but it's not identical. But the, the basic, the first steps are pretty much the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie that off. We're going to put right side to right side, and we're going to sew that tightly together, that seam, with a running back stitch for strength. And then we're going to set that aside. And now we're going to make the front insert. Um, this is basically going to be a pleated piece that's going to sit in the opening that's going to be created by our seam. So about here, you're going to be filling it in. Um, actually, I also wanted to show you, I very, very lightly pressed this so it had a nice um, crisp edge. Um, do not use high heat on this. You don't want to melt anything and protect your iron um, if you have a pressing cloth. So I'm going to go off and, um, and prepare the pleated insert, and then we'll show you how to fit it to the actual uh, tarlatan hat form, or rather turban form. So here's our hat gathered, sewn together, and our insert pinned into place. You know, you just have to pin this and see how you might like it. And then what we're going to do, once it's been sewn in place and we've trimmed off the excess on the inside that we don't need so we can avoid some bulk, probably about a half an inch away from that, those stitched lines. We're gonna try it on the Tarleton um, hat form. So most likely you're going to need to trim some off. So I would try it on the hat form. I would actually put it on the doll just to see how it fits on her head and then estimate how much you need to cut off. Don't worry about, um, I mean, you don't wanna cut off too much, but don't worry about um, uh, this showing um, because you're going to be putting a lining um, in place that's going to hide the tarleton but you do need to make sure that it clears the bottom edge of the turban so there's a nice clean finish there so we're going to go and do that and then come back and show you the next step so we've fitted the um, tarleton turban form into the turban. We've tried it on the doll just to make sure that we're comfortable with that. Um, the insert, before we had done that, the insert was sewn into position and we've trimmed away the excess. So now what we're going to do, and you don't actually need to sew this tarlatan into this because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be attaching your lining. So you're going to press down the two long edges of your silk lining about a quarter of an inch and then starting from the very back, generally I like to work from right to left, and making sure that you're, you're catching, or you're encapsulating rather, your tarlatan, you're going to start to sew this lining down with little running stitches, making sure that they don't show from the front um, to the inside of the hat. Once you've done that and you've gone all the way around, you're going to fold one of your short ends over. You can probably even do that now, but maybe as you go to the end and you estimate how much you're gonna need, you can fold it over, give it a little press so it's nice and crisp. Then you're gonna sew up that, you're gonna secure that, and then you're gonna sew a running, uh, a running stitch along the other long edge and you're gonna pull it up tightly like you would with a, any hat lining. And then you're going to basically push it into the 
the top of the turban. And then we're going to be ready to decorate this. And this is where you can have a lot of artistic freedom and, and fun. Um, but you'll be provided with um, a feather and, um, and some other things that you can use to trim this. And we will be back and show you those steps. So here's our finished hat. I'll show it to you from the front and from the back. Um, I had to use a feather that I had in stock but you're going to be getting a very pretty uh, pinkish feather, I think, or a bit like a light lilac feather. Um, but just to show you, you know, we've used bits and pieces of the medallions, one in the back. Um, we uh, we did a, a, a double row of the sort of the diamond shapes running around the hat. Um, we did a little rosette with some um, gathered sequins and crystals and um and one thing i didn't mention to you i know that michael mentioned it in the uh video for the turban for the pink pearl fishers but uh this won't fit over um fanny's wigs so you're going to want to fit this on her um without her wig but you might, and I har harvest, harvest, harvested this from another doll um, wig, but you might want to, you know, add a couple of curls or something just to have, if you want to see a little bit of hair um, coming from under the edge of the, the turban. But there we have it. I hope that you enjoy this project. I think that um, Michael and team did such a beautiful job with this design. And I'm telling you, this fabric is absolutely amazing to work with. It's gorgeous. So um, have fun and um, I can't wait to see what you create. Thank you. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.